Okay, everyone, welcome back. It is the last day. Um, I'm really proud of everyone that has made it this far and has stuck to it, made the attendance, uh, gone through the lectures, passed the test. Let's go ahead and take a look now at some bootstrap, okay? Uh, and after this, we have the graduation at two. I think you guys should attend this. Um, so you get a, a, an idea of your goal to, to pass this course, see those that passed it, see their projects, get some inspiration from your, uh, for your personal projects, and then, uh, just get motivated to get to this, this, uh, finish line. Okay. So, um, that being said, let's just dive right into the lecture. Today is about bootstrap and it is a really awesome tool to um, help design web pages. We wanted uh, to introduce this at the very end because this makes uh, designing a web page uh, so much easier uh, than the way uh, that you guys were tested on, uh, building a, uh, a CSS uh, and, and mocking the look of a page uh, the hard way. But that's okay, because you needed to know how to do things the hard way before you have a shortcut like this. Okay, it's like driving a stick shift before you learn how to do, uh, drive an automatic. Okay, so you, you really want to learn how to drive a stick shift so that if you get hired to do that, you'll know how to do that. Uh, and it can be up to the company to decide how they would... Um, uh, decide how to design their page, what tools they use. Uh, but this is a this is what's called a CDN. Okay, and let's go ahead and uh, get the CDN started. Um, so this is the page. All I need to do is go to Bootstrap, type it in Google, and the official website is getbootstrap.com. And as Christian said, it is great for your projects. When you don't have time to work on a front end in detail, uh, this is a way to strap things together. Okay, so if we go to the documentation, it'll give us some directions to get started here. Uh, so um, here we have uh, what we need to copy into our HTML. So get this into our HTML. And let's just look at what this looks like already with this H1 saying, hello world. So if I open this in a live server, as you can see, the text looks different already, right? This is, there's something different about this HTML with this um, script and this link. So as you can see, it's going to its it's going to a separate URL for the uh, CSS and JavaScript. And so let's take a look at what we are importing here into our page. Uh, if we go to this website and we go to the CSS portion and we paste it in and go, this is the CSS that we're importing. It's a lot of stuff, right? So I'm gonna just copy this into our CSS file so we can view it easier. And if I format the document, it's 1,000, uh, 11,000, 11, yeah, 11,271 lines of CSS here. This is the, this is the, um, and, you, and you can see here, it's using flex. This is the whole bootstrap, um, table row, um, REM, padding left. It, it has these preset rules that we are importing. And we can, let's, let's take a look at the JavaScript as well. We can use this to our advantage to create a page really, uh, really quickly. So, uh, oh, that's not, what am I doing? I'm going to copy this into the browser. Let's look at the JavaScript rules here. This is all the JavaScript. 
and format document. Four thousand one hundred eighty-one lines of JavaScript here. Um, you don't really need to parse through this to understand how to make it work. I'm just showing you what Bootstrap is. It's these preset JavaScript and CSS rules uh, that we can use, and we just take these components that are built. Uh, they're already linked to us in this HTML file, so you don't you don't need to. Uh, have a CSS and JavaScript file. I'm going to delete all of this. You don't need to go over now. I just wanted to show you how large the file was and, and what it contained roughly. So we have this here. Okay. We have a new, uh, we have these preset rules that we're borrowing from Bootstrap. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, import some components. So on the left hand side, we have a column uh, section here, and I am going to go to the components section. And I am going to start my web page using a nav bar. Okay, here's some documentation. You should read over this in your own time. But I am just going to take the first nav bar I see. So if I copy this here, copy it to my clipboard. I should get this nav bar in my page. So right below hello world, I'll paste it there. And let's go ahead and see my page. There's my nav bar. Now I have a drop down menu. I have these links here. I can put these links, uh, I can make these links go somewhere. This one is disabled. Just this is just an example. You can even add to this nav bar whatever you'd like. Uh, it has a search bar and a, and a search button already. So you can configure these uh, to work the way you need using your JavaScript uh, file. So you can use Bootstrap in addition to your own CSS and JavaScript, but it gives you a base to work with. And it's dynamic. So if I squish my page, as you see, it turns the nav bar into uh, a button here that you can drop down and see the nav bar, all right? You can, you can take this, you can view the mobile view as well. So let me expand my screen here. Ugh, it always does this. When I... I'm gonna make it an iPhone 5. And this is the view on an iPhone 5. This is my nav bar. Really neat, right? So sometimes it can be a bit frustrating when, when you've done all the hard work to make a CSS and HTML page from scratch. But this is, this is a really cool tool when you don't have time to work in the front end for your personal projects. And you, you are configuring a back end and are stressed with time for, for that. Use, use Bootstrap to get yourself started unless you have a very specific view of your page that's not uh, standardized here. Um, you can, there's multiple nav bars you can take. Um, you can view uh, the options on this page. I like the one I have so far. Um, and you can change the colors as well. So it should be able to go dark like this. We'll go over how to change the, the colors in a bit, but this is the options of nav bars that we can select from, these pre-made nav bars. Okay, so now that I got my nav bar, I want to add another part to my page. Um, I'm gonna add a carousel. And uh, there's, there's also a couple different colors here, so I can change the color. I wanna change it to dark. So if I go to uh, the class and I say BG dark on my class, I go to my nav bar here. Um, I expand the class. Paste it in there. And now I should be able to see a dark one. Oh, it makes the the initial load of it dark. I think I have to paste it in another class here. 
Um, ah, that's for the specific buttons. We'll play with this later. Get big picture, big picture here. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and import a carousel. So this is a carousel. Uh, it's a slider here. So you can insert images and slide through the images. I've seen this on a lot of websites. So this is pretty neat. Uh, I had some images saved in a folder. I don't know where they went, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and pull up some images. Okay, you guys don't mind, right? Okay, I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to put some comments on my page. I'm going to delete this H1. I'm going to say navbar. Below this. I'm going to say carousel. Well, I know where my images are here. Let me dig it out one moment. File, open folder. See if I can pull it in here. Okay. Okay, I've got my images. We want to pull it into this folder. Come on. Okay, we'll still we'll still access it anyways. We don't have to be in the folder. Um, okay, so now I have the carousel. I'm going to copy this carousel over. I'm going to paste it in, and there it is. Now, if we view it, it's not going to be very clean. Why is it acting like this? Let me see here. Open with live server. Uh, because I haven't uh, attached the images to the SRC, you're not going to be able to view it very well. So let me go ahead and do that now. Um, so I'm going to go into the SRC here and say dot dot. Uh, no, it's not going to go outside this bootstrap folder. Can you, can you try to do it manually maybe for, from that, like, uh, specific folder in your computer? If it doesn't work, I've, I've got it now. I've just pulled in the images. I was just being, a uh, stubborn here. The images, I've got my first image. Uh, it's a little big. I can adjust that. Go into the bootstrap images, my second image. Bootstrap images, third image. Okay, so now we have a carousel. We can we can um, change the size of this carousel uh, with our CSS, but I have got three images I pulled from the internet and now I can slide through them easily. I can put some text in the center here as well, depending on what carousel I use. So let's see the different carousels that are available. Uh, this one has captions. Uh, so imagine the carousel we have with some captions that maybe I'll select a better one here. This one is just a slide without any uh, options to see uh, what position in the slide we're at, like this one here. This one, you can click these options. Um, what else can we do? We can auto play the carousel so it slides on its own. Is it going to slide on its own? I don't know if this is it. There we go. So this will slide on its own. And this one will, you can even change the speed at, at which it slides as well. 
this is a really helpful tool for making a professional looking website with ease, right? This takes just copying and pasting some HTML tags from Bootstrap makes it look really nice. This is great. I know, right? Yeah, right. All about it. So this will autoplay. This is a bit easier. Isn't this owned by MIT? It's a good question. By Twitter. Twitter. Okay. And it said in the uh, video that this is fully um, legal to essentially use and steal for business use. Yes, you should be able to use it for any project you have. Um, okay, let's go through a couple more popular components here. I like uh, to use the, uh, let's see, the accordion. Accordion is a good one. Look at how this works. You can click a section, it'll open up, close up like an accordion. So if I wanna take this, add it to my page, I'll make a comment, accordion. Now let's look at our demo here. So below this, now we have these options to select through the accordion. Okay, now I wanna pull in some cards. Cards. See what the cards look like. Uh, going to this card section. And in this card, you can put an image and it'll have some text and then a link here to go somewhere. So I'm gonna pull this card here. Um, and let's say I, I pull one of the images we're already using here in this card. So this one, and I'll make two cards here. Copy this one. And in this SRC, I want a different image here. All right. So now we have two cards here. Uh, and I want them to be side by side. So I'm going to take a look into Bootstrap's uh, grid system. Um, where is the grid system? Everything's on this left-hand uh, bar here. It is, it should say grid. Here we are, the grid. So do you guys remember how the flex rule works? Um, if you apply flex one, uh, if you use display flex, very similar here. The difference is we have rows and then we have columns within these rows. So if I create a row here and I give it a class column, it'll take up one third of the column spaces available if there are three columns. So I'll go ahead and take this. I'm gonna take this opening div. I'm gonna make my cards into columns. So I'm gonna add this here. I'm gonna take the two bottom divs as well. Add that there. So now I have a row and let's see what the view is now. So now they're side by side, but they're not, uh, they're, they're within the same row, but they're not uh, columns yet. So putting items within the same row will align them horizontally, but I want to make them columns. So I'm just gonna take this class column and I'm gonna add it to the existing class for the card. So card space, now add column, 
do it for both. Now I have these cards taking up the width of two columns within the row. If I copy this the third time, I can add a third column. Pretty cool, right? Let's get a one through 10. I just wanna make sure you guys are following here, but I don't think this is too difficult. All right, so now I'm going to explore the column uh, system a bit more. Um, so we have some grid options. And the total number of columns you can have on a page is 12. So you can adjust the size of your column by giving it the, uh, the number here of the column. So for example, column six will take up half of the 12 available columns. Um, so let's let's give, if, if there are, okay, so this one is gonna be six. We're gonna make this one wider. We're gonna do this to our cards here. Uh, just do a dash six. Um, so this is in the middle one. Why is the first one being adjusted that size? I think it's because, let's see. I think we have to add some numbers to the rest of them. So if I say column two, let's call them two. Um, that is not correct here. So I want to, I want to make it a total of 12 columns. So I'm going to say the first one should be, how about I do this? I make this one, I make this one, one, and I make this one 10. The middle one should be 10. I don't think this should be affected by the size of the image here. Okay, maybe there's something going on here that I'm not understanding. In this row, there are one, two, three columns. The center one is wider. Maybe it's not working on the card so well. Uh, so let's, let's um, I'll give a better example of this in a minute. Uh, then you can adjust the size of the column also by this LG and medium. So let's see if that works on our, on our cards. It's frustrating me. Uh, column dash LG 10. Oh, so the LG and MD, they are uh, th this is saying based on the size of the page. So column LG2, if the page is large, then make it two, uh, two column positions. Um, let me give a good example of this. I don't want to let you guys down. All right, let's take this, this whole thing here. I am going to make this below cards. Column... System. Okay, and are we going to get a good view? So we have these columns below. And I want to give them some height. So uh, let's see. I'll give these each an eye. Uh, how should I do this? An ID? Yeah, that's okay. We don't, even though we don't usually do this here, we're just gonna do this for the sake of view. So I'm gonna say ID um, column 
I'm going to target it with my CSS. So I'm also going to use CSS. I have to go back to the top here and link my CSS. Um, and then I'm going to say ID column. I, uh, 400 pixels, background color, um, blue. Okay, that's better. So now I just need to add these IDs to all these columns. Remember, don't don't use multiple IDs with the same name. I'm just doing this to show that an example and not confuse it with this class here. Um, here we are. Here we are. I'll say column one, two, three, four five and six. I'll go to my CSS now. Two, one, two, three, four, five, five and six. Just add the numbers now. Five and six. Now I'll just change the color so we can see the different views. Uh, this one will be yellow. This one will be magenta, whatever that color is. This will be red. This one will be green. And this one will be turquoise. Okay, so here's our columns that we that we created. Um, four columns within the same row take up the same space. Uh, they each take up, uh, they divide the space evenly. So there's four pieces of the pie here. But in this second row below, where we have column eight and column four, it's divided into 12. So if I say column um, eight for column uh, five here, which is the green one, it's going to take up two thirds of the 12 available column space areas. And so this turquoise one on the right, if I say column four, it's taking up one third because um, four goes into 12 three times evenly. So what if I change this to a two? It'll only take up two uh, spaces out of the 12 spaces evenly. And if I change this to 10, it'll- it, Joshua, can you, can you show us again where exactly this is uh, uh, making the like manipulation? Uh, uh, is it, uh, where is that class? located and like what's happening behind that whenever we change that class name it just uh, changes the sizing right so right here on the bootstrap is this documentation for this it's i'm getting this example from from this area here okay if you specify the number next to the column it'll give you that space out of 12 column air, uh, spaces available. Yeah, I, I guess my question is more like, where's the flex happening uh, in there? Just because we're just changing the, 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 the hyphenated number? It's all, it's all happening uh, behind the scenes on Bootstrap's website. Oh, yeah, I got you. Got you, got you. All right, though, thanks. Yep. You just have to know these rules. This is what I was trying to show you with the cards, but it wasn't behaving so well with the cards. So keep that for your knowledge. It's it's sometimes better if you create the divs yourselves and give them these class columns instead of adjusting uh, 
some other components, as you saw when I was playing with the cards there. I was trying to make the cards behave in the way that we're, we're seeing this look here. Um, Joshua, sorry, is this the yeah. same as like the flets property in your CSS? It's similar. It's similar. Um, like, do you see how on this blue, yellow, pink, and red column here, there's only four columns in here, and they're all just called column. So if this was flex, this would be flex one, flex one, flex one, flex one. And it would take up one out of the four that are uh, defined in this row. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Let's let's give a uh, let me uh, understand here how well I'm I'm explaining the column uh, row system. Could you guys give me some feedback, please? Nineteen. Wow. Okay. Uh, what else can we show here? Uh, we have a modal. Should we get into the modal? Yeah, modal's good. Um, it's, it's tables are very easy. I looked at that earlier. What's that? Table is very easy just to throw in. Okay, uh, I'll I'll take a look at that. Um, so this this modal here is pretty interesting as well. This is a, a pop-up that looks just like this here. Um, and, it, and it requires a trigger. So here's the example. If I click this, it will pop up like this instead of having just an alert the way we usually create an alert. So let's go ahead and copy this. Modal example. Go over here and I'll click this button. And now whatever I want to appear in this uh, section, I'll just replace the three dots there with whatever text I need. Um, okay. What else do we need to look at? Um, table, Joseph said, table, 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 table. If I do it, control F, table, here we are. Um, this, this may seem to oversimplify making a web page, but I, I uh, focused on making some web pages here with, with Bootstrap for a while. Uh, and it came in really handy when I got my first job. Uh, Wells Fargo had their own uh, inbuilt component system that mocked Bootstraps. So understanding the grid system, uh, the 12 uh, column grid system, understanding how these modals work, it wasn't Bootstrap that I was working with. It was like a mock version of this that was using uh, React, which you guys will learn later on. But it was really helpful to have been already familiar with Bootstrap because it it came in handy on the job. I didn't think it would, but it really did. So it's good to get familiar with this. Um, so let's copy this table here. And I don't, I'm not going to go through all the inbuilt components. You guys can do that on your own. Uh, that's half the fun of, of playing with Bootstrap, just learning how to grab these, copy and paste it. Uh, so now I have this, this table here, but it only has one row. That's not helpful. Uh, did I not copy enough? Oh, no, it just didn't have these uh, these filled out. So if I were to copy this here and put that within each TR, 
I would have the view that I'm looking at. Let's see here. There we go. Here's a table. Um, any other components? Maybe, maybe I'll find one more that I like before I end of this lecture. Any questions while I dig out another component? Uh, there's also this color system here. So I can add colors to um, whatever I'm using. Uh, let's see if I can. And th these are the specific, uh, what's it called? Hexadecimal color system here. So if I wanted to add this instead of the IDs that I gave my columns. So let's see if I can do that. Oh no, I do want to, I, I do want to keep the, the, the height of the columns. So let's go ahead and comment out all the height. Okay, now let's look at this here. Okay, so now I want to comment out the colors as well. Wait a minute, I'm doing this backwards. I wanna comment out the colors and keep the height. Okay, so here we have our columns. They have their heights. Let's see if we can give them the specified colors that we need. So if I just take this word primary, it should be blue. If I add it to the class and I take a look here. No, it's not going to add it this way. I have to play with it a little bit more here. Um, usually, you just add these to the class, and it will do it, but not for these columns. You have to do it for some other uh, part of the. Uh, so maybe if I add, for example, this button here, this is a um, a primary color. So if I do F primary. Um, which button am I looking at? I'm looking at the card button. So I want to make it another color. I'm going to make it danger. So that's how you change the color system there. Um, so this preset for buttons, you can't set, uh, just regular divs with columns in that, uh, with that, with that uh, color background, um, and that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I think I should wrap it up here. Anyone have any questions? Okay, um, you guys have fun exploring Bootstrap. It will be fun to make some websites. You can make uh, plenty of websites. In no time with these features here. Um, so I, I want—I just wanted to ask: How does like Bootstrap differ from, uh, for example, like Bubble dot Bubble IO, um, where you build? Um, I don't know if you've explored it before. It's Bubble dot IO. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure. I I know there's a couple other CDNs that you can use, like uh, Tailwind. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't explored this one. Um, I don't think this one seems like it's a free one here. No, there it's it's free, but then if you want to deploy or something, then you can't. You have to uh, you have to uh, buy like a subscription or something. Okay. But you can build the whole thing. Um, you can build the logic. And the workflow and all of that, but then if you want to uh, deploy it, you would have to purchase something. Is is this like a low code option? 
like yeah. where where you yeah. don't necessarily have to know HTML. Yeah, yeah you, you don't kind of drag and drop. Yeah. Yeah, that would be the difference then. This is this is a drag and drop system where you create divs by uh, making squares. This bootstrap system, it, quite, it requires a little bit of HTML, CSS knowledge, and you can deploy this. If you know how to deploy your code, you can deploy it um, for see. free. I mean, it's not something you have to pay for. Let's see. Okay. So now that you guys have the knowledge, I would, I would recommend something like bootstrap over a paid system. Um, so you can create columns, put put content in the divs, squares, images. Um, so imagine if you had your test, if you took your test doing this, you know, it'd be really, it would, it wouldn't be a hard test, right? You can just make a nav bar adjusted. Um, and that, that's it. Uh, so thank you guys. Um, if you guys have no more questions, I'll go ahead and end the lecture here. Enjoy using bootstrap then. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Josh. Okay, and I'll see you guys at the graduation, right? How do we get there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I will work on providing a link for you guys. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh -huh. Thank you. No problem.